Is this thing on? Is, is this thing on? Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're all doing just spiffy. It's my my first episode here. I'm Jack from Switch Force, and uh, I hope you'll you'll give me a warm welcome because this is a big episode, a lot to handle. For a first day, we've got an exciting, huge game leak for 2023. Nintendo dropping some kind of depressing knowledge about a few different games and then we also need to cover a missing youtuber a, a decently popular youtuber has gone mia and, and i think you you should know so thanks uh thanks for for watching and um uh, i hope i hope we enjoy this to together so let's kick it off with the missing youtuber all right a a Longtime YouTuber uh, Zach underscore SF has gone missing. Now this case is very very interesting because the timing it just it lines up perfectly with a very damning event. All right, so what we have going on here is Zach underscore SF posts a picture saying, um, oh, "All right, we have a new sponsor." Lexar. The play card is the perfect way to store your Switch games, and this is an expensive card. One terabyte, whoa! A lot of storage, super pricey, but it's Amazon Gaming Week, and the card is 50% off. That is a monstrous sale. Unheard of. To put this huge card half off, click the link in the description, and you can grab one for yourself. I've heard that uh, every time you click it, it helps me keep my job, so maybe you should, and I've heard these cards are pretty good. I see a lot of them actually around the offices here, so they probably have merit, but that's Lexar, Amazon Gaming Week. This sale is this week only, and you can grab it for, chop off half the price, go use it on gasoline, or not. Soda. Zach underscore SF posts a picture saying, just started a new job for the first time since 2010. Any guesses? And that's the last communication we heard. Now, we've done our investigation here and tracked it back to a video posted on Saturday, August 27th during the Splatfest. Now, this was post Splatfest live stream, but it was a video about Sonic Frontiers, okay? And he called out the game for being barren and boring, and this was not received well, all right? People were very upset. Sonic super fans are just so confident this game is going to be great and exceed expectations that they were not happy with his personal own opinion taken with a grain of salt just his opinion that they weren't happy with it and then we have a follow-up from a a well-known nintendo youtuber rg rgt who clearly is indicating that zach underscore sf is in trouble he says uh youtuber you may like has no faith in sonic but i'm hyped for it and then indicates that he will be giving this game you know the right review and it seems like those events put together cause the disappearance i got the call that hey it's it's time to we need we need we need a replacement and so that's where we're at so we'll keep it posted hopefully uh this Apparently awful opinion does not lead to a very grave outcome. It's just Sonic Frontiers, a game franchise that has repeatedly scored very low and below expectations and now is trying to tackle the open world for the first time uh, with a an environment and a world described as open zone. I don't know. I, I, it's just an opinion. I don't think it was maybe that far off, and I think fans are just a little overzealous to get this game and have it be good because Sonic is a very nostalgic property, and everyone would love to see it succeed, myself included, myself included, but uh, sometimes you, you got to just call it how it is, and, and I hope that the internet still allows for people to, to call it as it is and to give their honest opinion. Now, speaking of honest, Assassin's Creed is a franchise that I love. This game started out in an amazing place. Well, not maybe amazing, but fantastic, and then reached amazing with Assassin's Creed 2, one of the best open world games I think ever achieved. Now, in recent memory, Assassin's Creed has gone RPG, all right? And it's really pretty good, but maybe not excellent. A lot of players enjoy this RPG turn, but for me personally, it reduces the power of your character. You're supposed to be an awesome assassin of stealth mastery, able to take anyone out with your hidden blades 
and yet now your blades are blunted by a leveling up system. Well, today's newest leak shows that Assassin's Creed Mirage is going to be the name for Assassin's Creed Rift, a game we've heard discussed many times, and this is supposed to release spring 2023. Now, this YouTube video categorized all of these interesting leaks about the game, and since both Jeff Grubb and Jason Schreier have said that much of the information is indeed true. And the best part here is that the game is looking to go back to basics, all right? It's supposed to be set in Baghdad, and it is going to remove many of the RPG layers, which I think will be a dynamic discussion for gamers worldwide, as many have grown to know Assassin's Creed as the Odyssey, as the Origins, as the Valhalla game that we've had recently. But this AC Mirage is apparently returning to the AC 1 and 2 vibes and becoming more of a stealth game where you do return the power of the Assassin. Now, there's some other notes about possibly remastering Assassin's Creed 1 utilizing these same assets and tech. Schreier says there won't be multiple cities, but it seems like the focus here is changing up the formula and returning to more of an actioning stealth game where you do have a more basic understanding of the world and less of the layers that have sort of convoluted the game. Now, I think certain players will be bummed by this, but many, especially the original fans, will find this really refreshing, and it has me really excited for Assassin's Creed. Now, depending on the time of the launch of this game and the supposed new Nintendo Switch revision or console, perhaps this game could be featured on the Switch platform as well. That will be TBD, but I think this is a great piece of leak for the Assassin's Creed franchise and for the fan base. Returning to Origins doesn't have to mean remake, and in this case, it's not actually returning to Origins, it's returning to the original Assassin's Creed and I think that's stellar. Let me know in the comments down below if you have liked the recent Assassin's Creed or if you've fallen off the franchise as of late and you're excited to hear that big sources like Grubb and Schreier are confirming, yeah, this one is gonna be different. Speaking of different, a really awesome game revealed way back in 2013 is finally releasing on Switch. That is nine long years and man, nine years ago, what was I doing? I think I was... I think I was just traveling the country by foot or something. I had a dog. I don't even remember its name. And uh, this luscious lock of hair was a whole lot less longer. But nine years ago, Ghost Song was announced, which is a wondrously artistic, hand-drawn Metroidvania. It's from a company called Old Moon, and the game has been in and out of the scene, and now finally it's going to be on your screen. November 3rd is the launch date, and this one looks exceptional. I've been waiting for this a long time. It's going to be on Switch and PlayStation 5, and yes, yes, yes. Now the game is really, really arriving, and after a year where Metroid Dread was successful, we have an opportunity to play another nifty Metroidvania that has had nearly a decade of development. So a lot of high expectations for this one, uh, but it does seem to have a challenging combat system and a really interesting suit that allows you to power up and progress with different weapons and game-changing abilities. So we'll definitely keep our eyes on this one. Something Nintendo often doesn't do is give us eyes on full information. They like to provide the top of the heap, but not necessarily the middle and the bottom. But recently we have an announcement of all of Nintendo's million sellers. Now this is fascinating for a number of reasons. We get to see the most up-to-date information on games like uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, 4.53 million units. Metroid Dread, which is getting close at 2.9 million units. But I want to draw your attention to the middle of this list. Obviously, we know Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is insanely successful. AC Smash Breath of the Wild, brilliant sales records. But it's interesting when you look, and, and I don't want to disparage a single game here, right? Every game that's gotten a sequel on Switch, well-deserved. There's fan bases that cross genres and fan bases that cross the globe. And a game like Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is a resounding success. But let me draw your attention to number 33 here, all right? ARMS has sold 2.66 million copies, which places it ahead of Xenoblade Chronicles 2, ahead of Mario Golf, ahead of Octopath Traveler, ahead of Pikmin 3 Deluxe, ahead of Xenoblade Chronicles, ahead of Mario Kart Live, ahead of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, with the IP of Spider-Man, Wolverine, and Captain America. Yet this game has received middling marks and no sequel love. It's strange how Nintendo is so willing to greenlight sequels for such games that have only sold either a little bit more or in many cases less than this game, and yet ARMS is I think regarded as kind of a 
not great Switch release. That game did have some problems, of course, but the core mechanics were really fun and innovative. Look how much success Nintendo had once they stuck to Splatoon, and I wonder if ARMS could see a similar sequel upgrade. We're talking a lot about sequels today, and many of them have evolved throughout their franchise. Nintendo often says things like, unless we have a big, bold idea, we don't want to iterate. That's why they don't haven't had made an F-Zero, a Kid Icarus, a Star Fox, and yet Splatoon 3 is back iterating, and Xenoblade Chronicles has been back iterating. Why can't ARMS get the time of day? I do hope that in this cycle, Nintendo will revisit their most original IP. It's a bit of a conundrum. Switch is so successful with sequels, so you end up just making more Mario, more Zelda, more Kirby. I mean, Forgotten Land has climbed to 21 on the charts. It's usurped Star Allies and is really just a strong game. It's higher than Tennis Aces, which released many years before. It's higher than Fire Emblem Three Houses, 1-2 Switch, Paper Mario, and of course, many others. But Arm sticks out like a sore bicep really wishing to be exercised again. I think the characters were original, and if they could just flesh out the content, not a lot of faith after the limited amount in Mario Strikers, but if Nintendo could find a way to expand the world in, in how they did with Splatoon, with the whole main hub and the single player, ARMS could really be a candidate for the biggest surprise game whenever Nintendo brings it back. And by golly, I hope they do. I know this is not a beloved title, but hey, I'm new here, so you're gonna have to sit with my fresh opinion, which is ARMS should come back. The sales speak for itself, and that game had potential. It just needed a little extra TLC. So let me know how you feel about some of these smaller sellers getting sequelized and iterated, whereas other games don't. Nintendo just sort of picks and chooses, and I wonder why they haven't picked arms again. I'm ready to arm wrestle anybody who says it shouldn't get another try, so holler at me in the comments down below. All right, all right, I know many of you are a bit stressed out by the disappearance of the YouTuber Zach underscore SF. Again, the Sanic situation, it just ballooned to, to a level that nobody really expected. I mean, it's it's Sanic Frontiers. I think the game has had middling reception, even from the very Sonic creators criticizing this man's response. So not sure what went on there, but our, our wishes and our hopes and our, our prayers go out uh, to Zach underscore SF that everything is all right out there. Thank you so much for bearing with me as I bring myself aboard this show as its uh as its new host and uh i really hope you guys have a really uh yeah get out there mm, do good all right th thanks again um think this show is daily okay bye